think that this will be a budget which there will have to be tough decisions made about our priorities. And my, in the OECD, uh, there is uh, I think we've I think we've explained that if you sh if you government. shout if you shout no the microphones prices. will ignore you. We have a question up the back from a no lady with a hand up. Go ahead. I have a question about the debt crisis, supposed <laughs> debt crisis. <laughs> However, don't, I don't want to be associated with some of the other people. Um, according to the International Monetary Fund, the Australian government's net debt per capita is one of the three lowest in the 22 OECD countries. In other words, our government's gross debt as a percentage of our GDP is less than a third of that of the UK, the USA or Japan. So I want to know, Minister Pine, if your government's talk of a budget crisis is really just a way in which to convince people that there is a crisis that doesn't really exist so that you can redistribute wealth away from the most vulnerable in our society and leave them to fend for themselves. Well... <laughs> One of the most important roles of any government one of the most important roles of any government is to make sure that those who need the most help are provided for by those who yeah, have the most. As, as Franklin Roosevelt said, the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, it's whether we provide enough for those that have little. So I went into politics 21 years ago because I firmly believe that the role of government is to protect and support those who need the most support and to let those who can fend for themselves, fend for themselves successfully. In terms of debt, the UK, the US, uh, uh, Japan would all much rather have vastly lower debt than they have right now. Every European country would rather be low debt. The, uh, the International Monetary Fund and the OECD and so on, they rate those countries with no debt and with in fact money in the bank as the most successful countries. And Australia was in that position six years ago and we were elected in September last year to return Australia to that position. That is why we won the election. It wasn't because people wanted to continue the failed policies of the previous government. Otherwise, we wouldn't have won 90 seats out of 150 and have our best Senate result ever. It was because the public wanted to change the government and therefore reducing debt, reducing the deficit, which we promised we would do, is something that we will deliver. And all those countries that you've quoted would much rather have very low debt, and that's exactly what we wanted to all deliver. All right, let's hear from our other panellists uh, reflecting on some of the questions we've been hearing <laughs> and a variety of them. Mark Trevorrow. I'd, I'd uh, believe that there was a, um, a budget crisis or that we had some sort of crisis of debt. If only Joe Hockey could be a little bit more convincing. I find him an unbelievable ham actor who just does not convince me. And I'd also be a lot more convinced if the Commission of Audit wasn't run by a guy who turns out to be a Liberal Party donor and also a Commission of Audit that suggests that they cut the minimum wage by $160 a week. That's outrageous. Outrageous. Well, the government hasn't accepted those recommendations. Well, you'll I hope not. You'll see on Tuesday which recommendations have been adopted. I can't wait for Tuesday. <laughs> Hello, me too. <laughs> All right, yes, well, look, I definitely make think... make this job a lot easier for me. Minister Pine, oh, sorry, I'd like... Sorry, sorry, oh, Pine. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> yes, well, lower debt is, is always a very good objective for any uh, economy or in any country, and I don't think the government's going to deliberately concoct figures uh, to deceive us, but um, certainly we have to make sure that any changes that are being introduced are done so fairly and that they make sure burdens are shared equitably. So, you know, it's very important not to bring in too many changes, too hard, too fast, such that, you know, the confidence which is, which could potentially be quite fragile, is, is sent down. Um, they, I mean, when austerity measures are introduced in Greece, I'm not trying to say that Australia's exactly the same as Greece, but it, it certainly had a spiralling and adverse effect on the Greek economy. So we just need to be careful how we bring about changes which are supposed to lead to a stronger and more prosperous economy. John Roskam, um, which raises the point mm -hmm. of uh, the method by which uh, the government may well be raising revenue. Part of that will be to bring in a deficit tax or so we hear. What's, is that a good idea? No, no. It looks like the deficit tax, if we have one, is going to be aimed at the wealthiest. Now, we certainly have to share the burden, but I think if you're giving nearly half of your income to the government already, that's sharing the burden. We have a situation which the socialist alternative might welcome, but which I think is a problem, whereby 2% of the wealthiest Australians 
pay 26% of the personal income tax. If we're talking about funding health, education, welfare, this is where the money comes from. And these are the people who we have to be encouraging. By all means, share the burden, but we can't succeed as a country. We can't fund the things we want if we're not creating wealth. Anna Burke, uh, if the Labor Party had had the opportunity to bring in a tax on the wealthiest people to help pay off the deficit, would you have done it? No. And we don't, we don't have a crisis. Going back to the original question, there is actually no budgetary crisis. Again, it is a... I, I'd love to be as um, uncynical now after 16 years in Parliament to think that Christopher's not concocting numbers and the government isn't concocting numbers, but I'm, sadly I'm becoming more cynical as the years go by. There, there is no, you know, there has been an issue with growing debt, but if we hadn't have grown debt, we'd have had more people unemployed. That money went towards programs to grow employment, to keep people in work, to keep the government ticking over. And when we talk, keep talking about reducing public servants, well, there's still people doing a job. There's still families who actually have to support somebody at home. That somehow this public servant is some anomalous beast that isn't, a, you know, isn't a human being. You know, an employee of the ABC, you know, running around on the floor here today could be seen, you know, as a public sector employee when you look at it like that. So you, there's not a crisis. There is an issue though with revenue and structural change to the budget and where we grow the money that supports all the things a government needs to do. You need to be, you know, strategic about those. We need to look at the ways of raising money to ensure that we can provide all the things that are needed. But it is not just about slash and burn. It's not just about cutting things out because they don't stick with the Liberal ethos. What about a mining tax with teeth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christopher Pine, um, briefly, are you uh, prepared to defend the idea of a deficit tax? Well, we'll see in the budget next week what the uh, outcome of this speculation is. But well, there's been plenty of speculation been coming lots of from speculation. the Prime Minister, among others, so I'm just asking you to speculate on his speculation. There's been lots of speculation. <laughs> and in the budget next Tuesday, we'll see the final response from the government to all of this, these discussions. The simple truth is there is no easy solution to the debt and deficit disaster that we have been left by the previous government. But whatever, and, that you, and that you've added 68 Whatever we to do, yourselves. we need to ensure that everybody contributes to lifting the burden of debt and deficit, uh, and that not just the people on low and middle income earners make a contribution, but that everybody makes a contribution, and that it's the right thing for the country.